Hi, welcome back. So uh, in today's video, we are going to be talking about a couple crucial, very important, very healing resource states and just kind of exploring a vibe here. So today's video is less structured, less about how to or uh, giving you a list. This is much more just kind of a, a deep dive into a couple important things. Uh, this is really going to be valuable for you if you're someone who deals with social anxiety, which a fair amount of my viewers do, or anxiety in general, or you struggle with a sense of belonging in the world or feeling safe and comfortable in your own skin, or like you just kind of struggle with, you know, your sense of who you are, maybe a lot of self-criticism, any of that kind of stuff. This is going to be a powerful healing message for you. So I hope you watch. At the end of the video here, uh, I'll probably do a bit of an exercise just to explore it a bit with you. So uh, I'll give you a heads up first for anyone who's driving or you know doesn't like exercises, wants to switch off the video, you'll have a little bit of a heads up. But otherwise, uh, we're just going to riff and then we'll go into that at the end of the video here. So uh, before we do, real quick, my name is Dave. Hi, uh, I'm a coach and hypnotherapist. I work in the psychedelic space here. Uh, I'm a a psychonaut. I have a history of working with psychedelics that goes way back for decades now. Uh, and I'm, I'm just a nerd when it comes to exploring consciousness and spirituality, personal growth, personal development. And, you know, really my passion is helping people access the, the best parts of their psychedelic experiences and their peak states in life, where, wherever that is, whenever that's from, and applying that to the areas of life where they need it most. So, the, those day-to-day -day struggles, whether that's you know anxiety or depression or procrastination or fear or you know whatever it is for you, uh, you know my passion is helping people access these best parts of themselves and connecting them to the parts where they need it the most. So that's the spiel. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So uh, this is kind of a off-the-cuff talk here. Um, on a couple concepts that I've been kind of rolling around in my head and wanting to articulate to you guys. And so this is my first attempt at it. Probably won't be my last. Um, and I want to just kind of give it to you as a gift. Some food for thought, you know, maybe some spiritual nourishment here just to kind of stew in these important ideas. So before I get into that, let me just say really quick, if you see me sweating in the video, it's 106 degrees out today. My house is um, not very well insulated. Uh, and I had to turn off the AC because it's super loud. So if you see me kind of dripping and sweating in the video, bear with me. I have a fan on me, but other than that, uh, I'm doing my best just to uh, to make it through the day and not totally, you know, sweat my face off. So, anyways, uh, yeah. So in hypnosis and in NLP, we talk a lot and we look a lot at change, right? We what we do is we help people shift from one way of being to another way of being. That's fundamentally the difference between NLP and hypnosis and something like psychology, which is much more about excavating the past, much more about catharsis, much more about uh, getting insight into you know, the roots of a problem. So it's much more about understanding uh, where, so it's much more past related, it's much more about insight related. Uh, as coach, as a hypnotherapist and an NLP practitioner, I'm much more about change, shift, transformation. Uh, and in this world of NLP uh, and change, we look a lot at state change. So, you know, if you think about it, what needs to change in your life to change your life is your behaviors, right? And what needs to change to change your behaviors? What drives behavior? Emotions, right? And what drives your emotion, your state? I mean, emotions and states are so inter over overlapped and, and intertwined that you can almost say they're the same thing. But so we work at the level of states. That's my point here, um, a lot. And so one of the valuable things about psychedelics, in my opinion, is that they deliver us this like huge potpourri, this like palette, this rainbow of amazing different states, some of which might be familiar from the past, some of which might be new and kind of like a, a personal growth moment of exploring new states and new experiences we didn't know we were capable of. Um, and anything in between, everything in between, really. And I think that, you know, having that as, as an experience, let's say you take LSD and you have a 10 hour LSD experience. Think about how many different states you're going to move through in the course of 10 hours on LSD. It's, it's wild. It's amazing. And out of those states, some of them are going to be profound. Some of them are going to be powerful, right? And, 
you, and so, you know, like I just said a little bit ago, we can take these powerful states and we can apply them to the areas of our life where we have problems. And so as, as that being the case, I'm always looking at what are some profound states? What are some healing states? Because these are really what's going to be at the core of personal transformation, personal growth, personal change, right? And there are a couple that I've identified that I think, you know, there, there's a lot. I mean, the, the list is huge, but there's a couple I want to zero in on today and communicate to you about and just kind of explore here a little bit because I feel like they're important and I feel like they're very healing, very transformative. And uh, water. And, uh, <clears throat> and just so crucial for anyone who struggles, again, with any of the kind of anxiety issues I was just talking about. So what are these states? Well, there are two I want to kind of hone in on here and just kind of explore a little bit with you. So the first one is inherent dignity. And then the second one that we'll d discuss in a moment uh, is brain farting, inherent dignity, and right, and your home frequency, right? So let's start with inherent dignity. So it's pretty much all right there in the, in the term, but I want to just unpack that a bit for you. So have you ever had a moment? And this is something, you know, maybe from meditation or maybe you just had a good day where you're head wasn't filled with a lot of worries and stresses uh, where you're just super present, you know, and, and I've had this on, on psychedelics on numerous occasions. And maybe you look at somebody, maybe you look at an animal like a pet of yours or animal companion, or, you know, maybe you even look at a tree or a plant or, you know, somebody you know, somebody you don't know, it doesn't really matter. But you look at, at this person or this being and you just notice that it doesn't even matter what they do or what they say or how they behave. There's just an inherent beauty and an inherent dignity to their being, to the fact that they exist at all, to their sense of presence as an, as an embodiment of the universe, as an expression of life force energy, that uh, they just by being, they have a beauty. They have a wholeness. They have a presence all their own that whether or not they know it, they may not even know it. They might be totally insecure and awkward themselves, but it's lovable and it's it's worthy of admiration and it's worthy of acknowledgement and it's worthy of seeing and witnessing as its own dignity, even if you don't like the person. I've even had this where I'll look at someone and I may not even like like them or like how they behave or like their attitude, but they have dignity. They have a thing inside of them that is theirs, unshakably, undeniably. And generally speaking, it's it's this just this presence. It's just this way of being that that is in everything they do, right? Maybe you know what I'm talking about. And I just want to offer that this is true for everybody that we all every single person you me everyone around us has an inherent dignity to being a part of life to being an expression of the universe an expression of god an ex what however you want to frame that whatever works for you in terms of conceptualization that there is a grace and a goodness and an elegance in being and a lot of times we kind of ignore it. We look past it. We like we get caught up in kind of all the filters of social interaction. Uh, we get caught up in judgment and hierarchy and quantification and, you know, labeling and all kinds of other stuff. And we look past and don't notice. But that doesn't mean it's not there. And I'm wondering if maybe you've seen this too. I'm wondering if you've ever just looked at somebody. You know, maybe you like them, maybe you didn't, maybe you knew them, maybe you didn't. Maybe they, you know, maybe it's a homeless person who wasn't well kept, you know, or maybe it's, you know, somebody you know and admire and trust. Maybe it's an animal, but just in their way of being, just in their being, there's a dignity, there's a grace, 
there's a, a beauty and a, a rightness to it. Um, I want to bring this up because so often when we're struggling with social anxiety, when we're struggling with uh, self-doubt, self-criticism, um, you know, being in our heads, uh, feeling insecure, or just anxiety in general, we're generally disconnected from this state of inherent dignity that is ours, that is actually always there and, and can't be undone, can't be shaken out of. You can't lose your dignity. It's always there. It wouldn't be inherent if it wasn't always there. And it is. So, yeah, I, I just want to bring that to your attention really quick and just consider, you know, when's the last time that you noticed that in someone else? Right. When's that last time that you just looked at somebody and you saw them for the beautiful expression of life that they are? And consider as well, you know, when's the last time you felt that in yourself? Have you ever felt that in yourself? And would you like to? Would you like to be in touch with your own inherent dignity? You know, what would it be like to walk through your day, to go through the world, go about your life, whether or not you're alone all day or with people all day, whatever, centered in, anchored in, rooted in your own dignity your own rightness as an expression of life. What would that be like for you? Would you like to experience that? And what would it be like to go through like a week like that or a month like that, right? And to be able to trust that, to be able to know that you have that even when you're not aware of it. And to know that you have that even when other people don't see it. Right, because you're part of life and life itself is beautiful. So how could, right? How could you not be? How could you not have that inside you as well? So I just wanna put that out there as something to stew on. I think this is a really powerful state. It's something I've, I've had many experiences with both personally, you know, maybe I took psychedelics at home and I'm meditating. I'm thinking about life and I'm thinking about the beauty of the world and I'm moved by the dignity of others. Uh, I've also been, you know, maybe out at a festival and it's just one of those moments and maybe we're hanging out with friends and we're laughing and we're talking or we're just chilling and hanging out. And I just look over at a friend of mine and maybe they don't even know I'm looking at them and, and you can just see the beauty and the rightness of them being themselves, you know? So just want to kind of put that out there as, as a resource, as a master resource state that you can pull from and start to have more in yourself and more in your life to feel on a, on a more regular basis and remember and be in touch with regularly this feeling of your own dignity. Because I think, th I think this is a big piece. I think this is a big part of why our culture kind of seems broken, why our world seems broken, why people act as weird and crazy as they do is that a lot of people have forgotten their own their own dignity, their own beauty, their own rightness. So they're, you know, externalizing. They're out there trying to get it, trying to earn it, trying to, you know, discover it, trying to and it's right here. So that's state number 1. State number 2 really overlaps a lot with this and ties into this. Um, but it it is distinct, in my opinion. And that is the state of your own home frequency. So this is another thing you've probably experienced on psychedelics where you take some psychedelics, more than a microdose, like a, a standard dose or a large dose, whatever. And you have a moment of just maybe as they're coming on, remembering, oh yeah, my vibe. My, my, my core vibration, my core feeling, my meanness, my, this is who I am as a vibration in the universe, right? That sense of like, this is my home. This is my energetic me. Like I can be all these other things and I can do all these other things. I can be all these other ways. I can be crazy and funny and intense and silly and chill and mellow and lazy and whatever, 
I can I can you know stretch out in a million different ways as as a flexible different nervous system with all kinds of capacities but when you come back to yourself when you come back and center inside of yourself as home oh yeah this is me your home frequency right this kind of and and it's so interesting because in our day-to-day lives it's so common for us to allow ourselves to fall out of tune with our own home frequency where we're just kind of busy adapting to life, busy struggling, busy uh, worrying, busy paying attention to things outside ourselves or busy trying to fix problems or busy, you know, whatever. And we forget to just come back to ourselves and just rest in that and just center in that and just feel that as a, as a core resource. I am me. And, and this is my vibe. And, and it is. It simply is. I don't have to defend it. I don't have to say it's great. I don't have to belittle it and try to hide it. It simply is, right? Your home frequency. Yeah, do, do you know that state? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, if so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like just riffing here, exploring these ideas. Comment down below. Let me know. Have you ever had a moment of, of powerfully feeling your own home frequency, of really returning to yourself, maybe on a psychedelic, maybe not, you know, maybe after, uh, you know, uh, an adventure in the outdoors or camping or, um, you know, in a moment of play or a moment of excellence or who knows when it was for you, have you had that moment of sense of returning yourself and fully feeling your own, your own vibration? And how good that feels and what that is. And just being in touch. Yeah. So that's these two resource states that, again, they overlap, I think, quite a lot. But I also think they're distinct. I think one can be in one's own kind of home frequency and not necessarily be thinking about or, or experiencing in terms of dignity, even though there's dignity in it. And I think one can also be in one's own inherent dignity without necessarily kind of experiencing that as a home frequency or, or the home frequency necessarily. I mean, again, they overlap a lot, but I don't think they're necessarily quite the same thing. But I wanted to bring these up because I think these are two very important resource states that probably a lot of us who use psychedelics know. They're familiar places we've been. We've touched these moments of poignant return of beautiful rest and centering in ourselves and yet uh there's something that i just don't see talked about and there's something that i just don't see explored a lot as important concepts i would argue you know quite honestly like if if you want to like take a young in like a carl Jung depth psychology perspective on it you know part of this whole process of you know whether you want to call it self-actualization waking up, spiritual awakening, personal growth, however you want to think of that. I think they're all kind of the same process fundamentally. Part of that process from according to Jung would be that we go into um, an experience of individuation, that we have to go through this process of returning to ourselves and individuating and stepping out into life, into the world as this is me. I'm me. And I know who I am and I'm distinct from others. I'm unique. I have valuable talents, I have valuable gifts, and, uh, and I'm comfortable with the differences between myself and my patterning and my vibration and others' patterns and others' vibrations. And that's good and that's right and that's beautiful. And if there's conflict and contrast with others along the way, that's okay. And, uh, and I don't necessarily need to abandon or sacrifice that. I think part of awakening is returning to that and making a commitment to uh, living inside of oneself and not abandoning and, and stepping out and extending our energy uh, by trying to be things we're not, by trying to be places we're not, by try- allowing our attention to be out in other people or out in the world. And, and that's not really our business. Our business as we grow and we heal and awaken is to more deeply go inside ourselves and more deeply embody what we are, who we are. And 
allow that to refine and awaken and become clearer and purer and more balanced and stronger and more robust and more vibrant and more on, more switched on as ourselves. And as we kind of bring ourselves into alignment, we move deeper into ourselves. This sense of dignity and the sense of home frequency becomes very natural. I think it's all, they all fit together really well. And yeah, so I want to just kind of put that out there for you and consider that if you're struggling with social anxiety, you're struggling with anxiety in general, you're struggling with depression, you're struggling with uh, self-actualization, any of that kind of stuff, kind of these common issues that a lot of people deal with. Part of what might be going on is that you're out of touch with your own dignity as a life form. And you're out of touch with your own uniqueness and the beauty of that, the value of that. And that instead of being concerned, you know, with what's going on out there, with other people's perception, with other people's, you know, uh, judgments or opinions or, you know, uh, kind of friction with you, that instead you move deeper into yourself and you move deeper into your sense of self-ownership, your sense of, you know, of uniqueness and individuality and, and the power and the beauty of that. And just own it. Just deeply own that as yours. Because nobody else will ever have your home frequency. Nobody else will ever hold the universal expression that you are in the same way. You know, you could have a doppelganger, you could have a twin. They're not going to be the same as you. Right? And if you can see that in others, you can see that in yourself. And, you know, shameless plug for a moment here, because this is something that's kind of hard to coach people into doing through video. If you do want help with moving into that in yourself, of course, you can contact me. I coach people on the, I work with people at this level all the time. So, okay. And maybe you don't need support. Maybe this is something you know, and it's just a feeling you just have to return to that maybe you forget because most of us do. So I want to just do a quick little exercise with that and uh, see how you feel at the end of it here. And, you know, so just a quick warning, if you're driving or you're busy doing something else that requires your full attention for your safety, or you're someone who just doesn't like personal development exercises, but you like to hear me ramble for some reason, this is probably about the point you wanna turn off the video. Uh, because I'm going to lead, for the rest of the video, I'm going to lead you through a set of exercises just to kind of explore this state a little bit. So I hope this is hitting home. I hope this is something that um, you're recognizing is a valuable, powerful resource state for yourself, right? I think, you know, in Buddhism, in Tibetan Buddhism, they talk a lot about uh like uh, this idea of primordial, what they call primordial pur purity, you know, or the Buddha nature, that fundamentally at the core of what we are, we're already awakened. We are already carrying the seed of Buddhahood, of divinity, if you will, of perfection, of rightness already inside of us. And, and you know, what they would say in, in Zogchen is that uh, the heart has like, it's like a mirror that we're polishing, that that all we're doing is reflecting the divine inside of ourselves. And all that happens is the mirror of the heart gets covered up with kind of soot and dirt and dust and muck. It's our job to polish the mirror of the heart and allow it to reflect outward into the world. The stainless, uncorruptible, already perfect nature of the divine that lives inside every single human being. That and lives inside ourselves. So that's kind of the conversation we're having here. So if you want, I'd invite you to just take a moment to get comfortable and just go ahead and allow yourself to just take a deep breath. Exhale. We'll do three of these. Take another deep breath. Exhale out any tension. 
Take another deep breath. Exhale out any tension. And as you exhale, go ahead and just close your eyes for a moment. Just allow yourself to feel how your body feels right now as it is. Any tension that might be there, any uh, slight discomfort, any spacious areas, any tiredness, heaviness, lightness, energy, restlessness, whatever is there, just notice it. And if you can relate to what I've been saying, I want you to just think of a moment where you witnessed someone in their dignity, in their essential, perfect, uncorruptible dignity. And just remember that moment. Remember what they looked like. Remember how the light hit them. Remember maybe how the tone of their voice was if they were talking or what you were saying to yourself inside your own head as you're witnessing this. Just remember the feeling of that moment. And I want you to just kind of like make a snapshot of that, that vibe, right? That energy. And almost like a computer, the way you can kind of copy drag a file over. I want you to just copy drag that energy onto yourself. And just allow that same color, that same lighting, that same vibe, that same sound to just fill your space. And just notice how that feels. Just notice how it feels to be in this feeling of dignity. And if for any reason that's kind of difficult to do, you can almost, you could also look at it like you're looking at yourself third person, see yourself, and you can just copy the same energy, the same coloring, the same lighting, the same moment, and see yourself third person like a movie or like a picture with this kind of feeling of dignity. Just notice what happens as you do that. And if you can, if you're ready, go ahead and just float on in to this version of you that has the dignity. Fingers in the fingers. Toes in the toes. Face in the face. Just fully drop into the to this version of you that has the dignity and just feel what it feels like. And as you feel this feeling, just bring it back to the present moment, back into you now. And just consider what it would be like to go about the rest of your day or night or tomorrow with this feeling. How would that be? And just notice what comes up. Maybe you have a little resistance. Maybe you don't. Maybe you have a little doubt. Maybe you have a little fear. Or maybe this feels just right and you already know what I'm talking about. And if you don't yet, maybe you will soon. And just allow this feeling to fully fill your body. And as you're allowing this feeling to fully fill your body, just centering inside yourself for a moment. Take a big deep breath. And just center inside yourself. And feel what it feels like to just be aligned in your home frequency, your home vibration, your native energy 
your natural you. These are all synonyms for the same experience. Just notice how your body feels when you're just aligned and centered in this natural home energy of yours. What do your shoulders feel like? What's your face feel like? What's your belly feel like? Your arms, your legs, your knees, your feet. Are there any colors associated with this feeling? Do you notice a shift in your visuals at all inside your head? Any mental imagery? Right? Any sounds, any self-talk or lack thereof? Just notice, just make a snapshot of this. And then when you're ready, just a moment here, I'm gonna invite you to open your eyes in the, in the timing that's right for you. Don't rush it. Just start to come on back and just come back and notice how you feel. How is that for you? Did something shift? Do you feel better? Did you discover something new? Or did this remind you of something you already knew? I'd love to know. Um, yeah, I feel like this is a really important state to reference and be in touch with and return to. It's one of these kind of power states that psychedelics so often show us that we can use in our everyday lives. So hopefully, if you went through this process, you had some sort of a shift, some sort of a change. And uh, if you did, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section below here so that I kind of know how this kind of video lands for you. Uh, and I'd love to just encourage you to just contemplate this, meditate on this energy, meditate on these states, and, um, and start to bring them more into your life. Start to bring them more into your everyday experience and start to access them on a regular basis because I think, I know that they're healing and I know that they're affirming that it really can't harm you to be in touch with your own dignity. It really can't harm you to be in touch with your own home frequency. And these are things we've probably seen that we probably probably know, but that we tend to forget and not use. And so, you know, what does your anxiety look like or what does social anxiety look like if you're walking through your day, through all your interactions in, you know, your inherent dignity, right? What does it look like when somebody's a little weird or shady or, or acting out of their trauma with you or just projecting on you, but you're in your own inherent dignity, right? What does it look like, um, you know, as you go about, interacting with whoever from your own home frequency you know what happens so yeah just food for thought i just want to explore these states with you share this with you make an offering to you uh and i hope you enjoyed it so this is a little bit of a different video from what i normally do it's a little more involved with kind of going through some exercises and also just kind of um you know starting to unpack different resource states there's so many we can talk about this is a huge area of exploration, but I just thought I'd try something different and kind of share these with you because I feel like they're valuable in the conversation that we're having here on the channel. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you did, feel free to comment down below. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, and if you are new to the channel, this is the first time you're seeing this kind of content, uh, please you know, consider subscribing, liking to let the algorithm know that you know for other people who are like you who might enjoy this content, that this is out there and available. And, uh, you know, if there's anything you'd like to see, also leave that in the comment section down below. And uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate, you know, all your views and all your interaction. Uh, this is beautiful community we're building here. I'm just honored to be able to share these gifts and, uh, and learn more about who you are too. So much love, be well. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video.